In this tutorial, I will show you how to texture paint metallic maps in Blender. And then after that, I will also show you this really cool node setup that you can use to paint edge wear on your objects. So you can see in this example here, I've set it up so that the cube looks like a painted metal, but then where I am painting, it looks like the cube has been damaged on the edges. And so you can see the metal underneath and then there's the paint on top. So it looks like the paint is being worn away on the edges. So I'll show you how to do that in this video. Now, if you'd like to learn the basics of texture painting in Blender, then definitely check out my texture painting for beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And also, if you'd like to learn more about texture painting, then you can also check out my texture painting tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And I'll also have links in the description too, where you can help support this channel. And I do really appreciate all of your support because it really helps me to continue to create Blender tutorials. All right, so what I'm going to do is just select everything and delete it. And then I'm going to press shift A and I'm just going to add a a cube and I will just press the tab key to go into edit mode and with everything selected I'm gonna press Control B to add a bevel and I'm just gonna scroll my mouse wheel out and then click to place that there and then back in object mode I'm gonna use the object context menu just to shade the smooth but you can of course do this on any object that you want maybe you're creating like some construction equipment or like some metal object or maybe you're creating like a robot which has like a painted metal or something like that I'm just gonna be using this cube as an example so now what I'm gonna do is click click right over here to go to the shading workspace. And I'm gonna click on the new button here to add a new material to the cube. So we now need to create a new image texture that we can texture paint on for the metallic map. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm gonna search for an image texture, and let's just drop the image texture right down here. And then I want to create a new image that we can paint on, so let's click on new here. And on the name here, I'm just gonna call this like cube. And then I wanna use a 4K texture, right now it's a 1K texture I want to use 4k so I'm gonna click and then drag down and then let go and this way we can change both the values at the same time and I'm gonna type in 4096 and hit enter that is the standard resolution for a 4k texture now the color here is somewhat important because if you make it fully white then all of the material is gonna be metal and then you could paint away where you don't want it to be metallic or if you make it all the way to black then it's not gonna be metallic at all and then where you paint where you paint white it's gonna be metallic Metallic. So if it's white, it's going to be metal. If it's black, it's not going to be metal. So I'm going to leave it as black because I want to paint the metallic values in. And then I can just click on OK. Now, because this is going to be a metallic map, we're not going to be putting it into the base color. So we want to take the color space here and we want to change it to a non color here on the texture because any textures which aren't contributing to the base color need to be set to non color, but the color map needs to be left at the sRGB. But this map we want to leave at non color. And then let's take the color here and I'm going to stick it into the metallic because I want it to control the metallic of the object. And then I'm also going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse into the material preview just so that we can see this. And I'm also going to scroll my mouse over here and click on this arrow. And I want to use a different HDRI lighting for the preview. So I'm going to use this one right here. I think this one is pretty nice. And I'll turn the strength up a little bit. And then it's very white right now. So to make it darker, I'm going to take the base color here just make it a bit darker and this will allow us to kind of see the shape better. And then also I'm just gonna turn the roughness down a little bit so that it is a bit more shiny. All right, so before we start texture painting this, there is one more really important thing and that is that we need to UV unwrap the object onto our image texture. So to do that, you can click right over here on the UV editing workspace and you can see here's the UV editing and here's the object. Now I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail about UV unwrapping. You can see this cube here has already been UV unwrapped. If you'd like to learn the basics of UV unwrapping, then you can check out my UV unwrapping for beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And also in my texture painting for beginners tutorial, I go into a bit more detail of how to UV unwrap your objects so that they're best for texture painting. But just make sure you have a decent UV unwrap, make sure that the UV islands aren't going out here outside of the texture, and also make sure there isn't any overlap. So this will work fine for what we're doing. So I'm now going to click right over here on the texture painting workspace and we can start the texture painting. So right over here, this is the actual image and you can select it if it's not selected. And so we actually can paint on this if we want to, but it makes much more sense to texture paint on the actual mesh. So I'm just going to drag this and make it smaller so we have more space. And then I also want to actually preview the material in real time as I paint. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into the material preview. And then I'm going to use the same settings here. So I'm going to click right here on the shading drop down arrow and I'll change the HDRI to this 
one here. I really like how this one looks. And also I could maybe just turn the strength up a little bit. Now for the texture painting, I'm gonna be using my Wacom Pad tablet. And I definitely think using a drawing tablet for texture painting is much better than using a mouse because with a drawing tablet, you can get nice smooth strokes and you also have better posture. And also most drawing tablets will come with some pen pressure and that can be super helpful for the texture painting. So if you can use a drawing tablet, I would recommend that. And I will also have some Amazon links in the description to some tablets that I recommend. Those are affiliate links. So if you make a purchase through those links, that will help me out, but with no extra cost to you. So as I mentioned earlier, if you paint white, that is gonna make it metal. But if you paint black, then it's not gonna be metal. So you can see right up here, there is a color, and then there is also a color over here. So right now it's set to fully white. So I can just start to paint here. So I'm just pressing down on my drawing tablet and I can just start to paint here. And you can see as I paint, I'm adding white values. If I make this bigger, you can see that there's actually white values right here. So if I paint white values, then it's gonna be more metallic. But if I wanna make this black, you can see there's actually two different colors here. So I can actually hit the X key and that is gonna flip the colors and I can now paint black. So if I paint black, it's gonna get rid of it. And so it's not gonna be metal. I'm gonna hit the X key to flip that. Or of course you can just change the strength of that by changing this color here. Um, but I can just start to paint along here and I'm gonna make the edge kind of metal. But you don't have to just use this for edge wear. You could use this for really anything. If you have a certain area of your object that you just wanna be metallic, you could just paint that certain area with metal. So this is really cool, but I also wanna show you how you can paint with a noise texture. Because you can see as I paint, this is very smooth on the edges. So to paint with a texture, what you can do is uh, click and drag to close all these. And I just wanna open up the brush setting. And then I wanna open up the texture right here. So open up the texture. And then you can just click on the new button to add a new texture. And then I'm gonna be adding in a procedural noise texture. So you can click on this button right here and that's gonna take you to the texturing panel. And then right here on the type, it's set to image or movie. So if you have a texture, you could click on open and add in the texture. I'm gonna instead click right here on image or movie and I'm gonna change this to clouds. And so this is basically Blender's procedural noise texture. And then right here on the depth, I'm gonna turn this up to the max of 30 and that way it's gonna be more detailed. You can see it's more detailed now. And also I think I will change the size. So I'm gonna make this a bit smaller, something like that. So I can now press the F key to make my brush bigger and I can start to paint here and you can see we are now painting with that noise texture. So you can see it looks more noisy and this could also be kind of like a metallic cube, but then some parts are rubbed away. So they're like more shiny and more metallic. Um, whereas most of the cube maybe has like a painted layer on top of it or just something else on top of the metal. And then when you're done texture painting, it's very important to save the image because if you don't save the image to a file on your computer, then when you close Blender, Blender's not gonna save the image data. So to save this, you can click here on image and then you can click on save as. And I'm just gonna save this in a folder with my files and I'll save this as cube metallic and I'll just save it as a PNG. You could also use a JPEG, I will use PNG. And then I'll click on save as image. So I can now go right back over here to the shading workspace. So that is it, that is how you texture paint metallic maps. But I'm now gonna show you that really cool node setup that you can use to texture paint edge wear on a painted cube. So the first thing that I wanna do is put this metallic value into the bump. So what we're going to do here is take the color, let's put that into the normal, and then I need to convert this to normal data. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the bump node, and let's drop the bump node right here in between the cube and the normal. And then to actually convert to normal data, we want to actually put this into the height value. And then it's going to be way too strong right now, so I want to make that much less strong. So let's just turn the strength value to like a 0.2 on the bump. Now I wanna sharpen up this edge because you can see the edge is very smooth. There's a smooth transition. So to make this sharper, I'm gonna press Shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm gonna search for the color ramp and then let's stick the color ramp right here before it goes into the bump. So then what I can do is I can drag these two values together and that's gonna make it sharper. So let me just like change my view so you can kind of see it in the reflections. So I can drag this together and drag this together and you can see now the bump is just on the edge. So over here it's gonna be the painted metal and then over here it's just gonna be the raw metal. So you can kind of play around with this and get it to how you like. And then also you can see that it actually looks like the metal part is popping out. So to fix that, I'm gonna click on the invert button and then it'll look like it's going back in 
skin instead. And then if I zoom up closely, you can see it does look a little bit pixelated. So one way to fix this is to click right here on the linear, and I can change this instead to cubic. And if I change it to cubic, it's going to smooth that out. You can see that looks a lot better now. Now I also want to make the colors change. So where it's been worn away, I want it to be like a gray metal, but then I want the rest of the cube to be a painted metal. So I can take the color here and we can put that into the base color of the principled shader. And then I actually want to change the colors. So let's click on this color ramp and I can press shift D to duplicate it. And let's just drop it right here. And then what I can do is hit the backspace and that's going to reset the color ramp. So then I can drag these two values together to make it more contrasty. And I'll bring it in something like that. So I'm kind of looking at that edge there and I just want to make the colors very strong. So I want to have it very contrasty. And then I can change these colors. So on the black tab here, I can just make this whatever color I want for the paint. So what I'm going to do is make this kind of a yellow color, sort of like the color which is used for construction equipment. I think that is pretty cool. You can change it to whatever color you want. And then on the white tab right here, I'm going to make this very dark. So it looks like it is a dark metal. So something like that. So that is super cool. And then also I need to play around with the color ramp because you can see there's kind of a fade there. So I'm going to bring this in and just fit it to the bump. So something like that. So that is looking super cool already. And then I can also make this affect the roughness so that where it's metal, it'll be more shiny. So I'm just going to bring these down so we have a bit more space. And I'm going to take this image here and I'm going to put it into the roughness. And then what I can do is I can click on this color ramp. I can press shift D to duplicate it and let's stick it here before the roughness and then I can just change these color ramp colors to change how reflective it is. So if I click on this white tab here, I can make this white tab darker and you can see that is going to make the metal part more shiny. So I think I'll make it a bit darker like that. And then this painted part right here, I want to make that a bit more rough. So let's click on the black tab and I can turn this up and so it's going to be more rough. And then I also want to make the metallic part look really bumpy and really worn. So what I can do is press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a noise text Texture. Let's put the noise texture kind of down here. And then I also have the Node Wrangler add on turned on. Uh, if you don't have the Node Wrangler add on enabled, you can click on edit and go to Blender's user preferences and enable the add on on the add ons tab. So then once you have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click on the noise texture and you can press Control T. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping, but I don't need the mapping, so I can just click on it and hit X to delete it. I want to use the object coordinate, so let's put the object into the vector. And this way, the noise texture will be placed on the object more evenly. And then I can also change some of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the detail all the way to the max of 15, so it's very detailed. And I could turn the roughness to just like a 0.55. So I now want to put this noise texture into the bump. So I can click on this bump and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. Let's drop it down here and then I can put the normal up to the normal. So this way we can mix multiple bump maps together. And then I want the noise texture to go into this bump so it'll actually make it look bumpy and noisy. So let's take the factor and I can put that into the height value. And I also want to turn off the invert because I don't need this to be inverted. And it is a bit strong, so let's also turn the strength value to just like a 0.1. So now you can see the metal looks bumpy all over, but I only want the worn parts to be that bumpy. So what I can do is click and drag to use a box select and just box select these and kind of bring them back. And I also want to bring these back as well. So what I'm going to do is use this color ramp as a mask to tell it that this noise texture is only going to show up where the metal parts are. So I can press shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the mix RGB, and let's stick the mix RGB after the noise texture right here. So then this color ramp is going to go into the factor, and the factor is going to tell it where it's going to be color 1 and where it's going to be color 2. And then this noise texture here, I actually want to put this into color 1. And then I have the node wrangler out on enabled, so I can hold down the control and shift key and select different nodes, and that's going to preview the node on the object. So then right here on color one, I can just make this fully white. So now you can see that this noise texture is only showing up where the metal is because we're using the color ramp as the factor. And then I can just control shift and select the principal shader. So now just the metal looks bumpy. And then one more thing I want to do real quick is I do want to make the painted part also just have a tiny bit of bump. So I can click on this bump right here and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And I want to stick it right here after the other bumps. So just 
stick it right there, and the normal can go into the normal. So I can now take this noise texture, and let's take the factor, and I'm going to stick that into the height value of this bump right there. And so this is just going to add a little bit of noise all over the material. But then I do want it to be very subtle, so let's turn the strength here way down to just like a 0 0.05, so now it just has a tiny little bit of noise all over the place. So there we go, that is the node setup. Now what's so awesome about this is that all of these values are coming from this image texture. And so we can paint this and it will adapt and update in real time. So let's click right back over here to the texture painting workspace and I'm going to make this smaller and we can now start to paint this. So I'm going to just start to paint along here and as I paint you can see it appears as though the paint is being worn away and you can see the metal underneath. And for painting this edgeware, I like to click here on the blend, and I like to change this to the linear light. I think the linear light looks a lot better, and so I can now start to paint, and you can see it's going to be much stronger. So now it looks like the paint is really worn away, and this is actually really fun to play around with because it's updating in real time, so it's super cool. I could also uh, go here to the strength and turn the strength value way down of the brush, and I could also make the radius a bit bigger. And then I could just kind of tap along here, and it's going to be very subtle, and so it's just going to make it look like it's worn just a little bit. So I could just go along here and paint some areas and just kind of make the metal look like it's been worn or kind of chipped away. So this would be really cool for creating like some old construction equipment or maybe like if you're texture painting a robot, like an old robot or something. I could also just like go around here in circles in some big areas and kind of make it look like the metal was banged up, like someone hit it with a hammer and like the paint fell off or maybe it's like rusting away. You could also use this to create like a cool rust effect. And you could also use this method to make some really cool scratches. So what I can do is press the F key to make my brush much smaller, just make it really small. And then I could just go along here and I could just add some little scratches. So this is super cool. It looks like the metal has been scratched in some areas and I could just go along here, keep on adding scratches. Maybe for this on the blend type right here, instead of using linear light, I could just change it back to mix. That might look a bit better. Um, but yeah, I can add some little scratches here. So it looks like the metal has been scratched. Up. Maybe even here along the edge, just kind of go along add some scratches there. So that is super cool looking. And also don't forget to save your image after your texture painting, because if you don't resave this image, then Blender won't save it. So let's click on image and I can click on save as. And then you can see I've already saved this image, but I'm just going to override the previous image and that'll update it. So I'll just save it as cube metallic. You can see it's red. That's telling me that it's going to override the other image and I can click on save as. So let's click right back over here to the shading workspace. Now, because of this node setup, we're not just using texture maps now, we're also using some procedural materials like the bump and the noise texture and the color ramps. So if you wanted to use this material in like a game engine or a 3D software or upload it to Sketchfab or something like that, then you would need to texture bake all of the values. And I actually have a texture baking for beginners tutorial. You can check that out with the link in the description and you can learn how to bake the color map and the metallic and the roughness and the normal. Although you wouldn't actually need to bake the metallic map because we already have a metallic map, but you would need to bake the normal and the roughness in the base color if you wanted all of these to just be texture maps. Or if you're only using this in Blender, then you could just leave the procedural node set up. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for watching. And again, definitely check out my texture painting for beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And you can also check out my texture painting tutorial playlist if you'd like to learn more about texture painting in Blender. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can also check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support this channel. But I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching.